Hello, folks. With school deadlines behind me, I can finally get back to studying more animations. To help tide you over until Season 2, I've done a bonus review on an episode of one of Cartoon Network's most successful shows. Ed and Nettie! For those unfamiliar, Ed and Nettie is about three adolescent boys who try to scam the other kids in their neighborhood out of their money. And for one reason or another, their efforts end up failing or backfiring, usually resulting in over-the-top slapstick. Back in the day, this cartoon was my absolute favorite. The colorful, quirky characters, the bizarre, larger-than-life contraptions, the oddball humor... It was crazy fun! But even though I loved this show to death, it did have a few episodes that would prompt me to change the channel. The topic of this review, Sorry Wrong Ed, is not one of them. Rather, this is an episode I feel has been unfairly dishonored in recent years due to certain... heavily biased criticism calling it one of the show's worst. Sorry Wrong Ed is something of a black sheep in the series, and may not rank among the best episodes, but it's not poorly made. So, what is this episode about? The story is that one of our title characters, Eddie, takes a supposedly cursed telephone that Rolf, the neighborhood foreigner, was trying to bury. Then, when the phone starts ringing on its own, Eddie gets struck with misfortune every time someone answers it, which escalates to a climactic barrage of slapstick. Right off the bat, one of the most prevalent arguments I've heard against this episode is that Eddie didn't deserve his fate, that he was just tortured for no reason. Now, it's a common joke among writers to say, make your characters suffer. Putting them into conflict moves the story along and keeps things interesting. However, loading a story up with suffering for the sake of suffering comes off as cruel, and makes for an unpleasant sit. This episode handled the suffering well. Perhaps the most important reason why is because of Eddie's actions and motivations. Of the three Eds, Eddie is the greedy schemer. He's the one always coming up with the scams to swindle the other kids, which were typically some kind of makeshift ride or phony service. The main scam of this episode is subtler, and it's how Eddie gets his hands on the phone. Walk away from the suffering that has cursed Rome's family for generations, and boy! <laughs> Why don't you get Victor to give you a massage or something? And I'll guard the big bad phone for you. Thank you, Ed Boy! Thank you! Idiot. Okay, Ed! Dig! This establishes that Eddie is not simply a victim in this story. Him not believing the phone was cursed is understandable. Rolf is known to partake in bizarre cultural ceremonies, which is something they even reference directly. A ceremonial telephone barrier? Oh my, how quaint. However, this does not excuse Eddie from deceiving Rolf into thinking he cared about his well-being by lying about guarding the phone. This isn't the only reason Eddie deserved his fate, either. When he becomes convinced the phone is cursed, one of the other Eds, nicknamed Double D, tries to calm him down. Any relationship to Rolf's telephone of doom is pure coincidence! I say we test it! So instead of just burying the phone, Eddie decided to egg the curse on just so he could say he was right. He even wants up that decision later, when he flat out tries to pass all the suffering onto someone who would have been an innocent victim. Well just go to your head so you don't lose it, okay? Okay... This is why the story works. Eddie makes stupid, selfish decisions at every turn, so we don't feel sorry for him when things go wrong. Before we discuss the other characters, let's discuss the quote-unquote torture. It's cartoony slapstick that the show is known for. There are a few things that help sell these gags. Two of them are timing and absurdity. Some of them are so ridiculous and over-the-top that it's funny, such as this moment. <laughs> Not the first thing you'd expect to see in suburban America. The ground shaking helped build anticipation as well. We knew something was coming, just not what. Another of my favorite moments is this gag from the beginning. Yellow? What were the odds of that? I ought to mention that this show made excellent use of sound effects, and this moment is an example of that. The music box tune adds to the timing, using a common melody that leads us to anticipate the punchline. Meanwhile, the sci-fi beeping adds to the absurdity by making it seem that the cart was homing in on Eddie. There's one more key thing that makes this humor tick. Cartoon invulnerability. By that I mean that no matter how much damage Eddie takes, he'll not have a scratch on him by the next scene or shot. 
This keeps the violence from feeling real, so the audience feels okay laughing at his misfortune. It's hard to empathize with a character's physical pain when they can just brush off being crushed by a runaway ice cream cart. Had the show been more grounded in reality, it'd be a different story. Now, the other main argument I've heard against this episode regards Double D, the smartest and most sensitive of the group. Normally, he's patient and sympathetic, and the argument I hear is that he's uncharacteristically mean in this episode, especially at the end. I will say that towards the beginning, a couple of his lines come off as sassy. It looks like you could use a new mattress, Eddie. Shall we ask Rolf if he's buried one somewhere? <laughs> I don't know if that was intentional, but it is out of his character to act this way without being severely provoked. That said, the rest of the episode is on point with Double D's character. He has a passion for science and staunchly disbelieves in the supernatural, which sets up conflict between him and Eddie. There's quite a difference between Double D's attitude at the beginning of the episode versus the end. At first, he's his ordinary self, helping his friend up when he gets hurt. As the story goes on, we see him become increasingly frustrated as Eddie constantly refuses to listen to him. Hell, even after Eddie thinks he's free from the curse, he still kicks the beehive. There's no such thing! Says you! This finally pushes Double D too far. Seriously, look at him. One cue that he's caught off the deep end is the bullseye. This was a common detail the show used to express extreme feelings, be it fear, anger, shock, etc. It was also often used when a character would go out of their mind. Plus, there's his unusually broad smile. Let's compare this to an earlier expression of his. See, this is the face of a man who's just having a laugh with his friends. This is the face of a man who's just had a screw come loose. A lot of the criticism I heard of Double D in this episode came off like he was being criticized for having character flaws. Yes, he's the most patient and sensitive of the group, but he's not Jesus. He has things that get under his skin, and his patience has limits. Plus, this ending tirade of his is beautifully ironic. Look around you, Eddie, and what do you see? Nothing! The one who's been going on about rationality the whole time, witnesses scientific impossibilities with his own eyes, yet thinks nothing of them. You have to wonder how this ending would have gone if Eddie had kept his mouth shut about the curse. I've been going on about the slapstick, but this episode has its share of spoken jokes as well. Many of which are said by our third main character, Ed. Edward! Yes, mommy? Ed is the lovable, simple-minded oaf of the group, and the right character to deliver these sorts of lines. I know where you're going with this, Eddie! Nighty night! He has that sort of early Patrick Star delivery. His sincerity when saying odd or ridiculous things is both comical and endearing. It's especially effective when his one-liners are used to follow up about a slapstick. Eddie's in pain now! He'll have to call you back! In conclusion, the plot is simple and straightforward, so it's the characters and humor that really drive the episode. While the jokes land consistently, the slapstick ranges from unpredictable and over-the-top to just par for the course. And despite a couple hiccups, the characters are consistently written. In terms of animation, there was only one obvious flub. Eddie was supposed to get charred by lightning here, but he's already charred before the lightning shows up. There's also a few shots of the Ed staring at the phone that end up feeling like padding. These drag down the pacing and leave you wondering why they're lasting so long. Other than that, the animation is on par with the smoothness and quirkiness of the rest of the show. Overall, it's a good episode of a great cartoon. And that concludes this review. Stay tuned for Season 2, folks, and thanks for watching!